Hello and welcome to Talking Europe. Finland is on track to join NATO after the Hungarian parliament ratified Helsinki's application earlier this week. Finland and Sweden have been knocking at NATO's door for nearly a year, having first applied in May 2022 in a move that was seen as a major shift in European security. Both countries were invited to join the alliance at the Madrid summit in June of that year, but various obstacles have slowed down the process. It now looks as though Sweden might not enter NATO at the same time as Finland, however. To unpack all of that and to touch on various other European issues, I'm very pleased to welcome Finland's Minister for European Affairs, Tuti Tupurainen. Uh, so good to have you as, uh, as our guest. Thank you for uh, accepting our invitation. Um, j just uh, if you could talk us through the timeline first, when do you expect to actually join NATO? What are the different steps now? Well, we are uh, ready for NATO membership. Everything one has to do nationally mm. has been already done here in Finland. Um, we had good news from Budapest on Monday, uh, and we are grateful for the ratification of, of Hungary. And now uh, we are expecting uh, soon decisions from, from Turkiet. And then uh, by the Vilnius summit, I hope both Finland and Sweden will be member states in, in NATO. Uh, obviously, you'd been hoping that, th uh, that Sweden would join at the same time. What does it mean to you in practical terms if Sweden doesn't join at the same time? Does it leave a kind of security hole for NATO? Well, of course, it was our priority to enter NATO together. We started this process hand in hand, and Sweden is our closest partner. And it would have benefited NATO the most to access us both uh, simultaneously. But here we are in a different situation. It is not our choice. Of course, we have to be humble as, as states who are applying for member states. So it's a decision done by the Hungarian parliament, and we are still awaiting the decision by the Turkish um, parliament. But since it looks like Finland is going to be in NATO before Sweden, then of course, as members uh, of NATO, Finland will then um, try to help uh, mm. Sweden to also access as soon as possible. So President Putin has said that your country joining NATO is not a threat unless NATO infrastructure is built in Finland. I'm assuming that you do have plans to build infrastructure as a future member. We do realize that being a member in NATO uh, means both rights and obligations. And we are ready for our responsibilities as an allied member. We are ready to take care of the security of the whole region, not only of the high north or our closest uh, areas. So we are uh, ready uh, to different kinds of uh, consequences of our NATO membership. And let us be very clear that it is not for Russia to, di to dictate what an individual country does, uh, even as a member of NATO. Um, NATO is a defense alliance, and it's not threatening anyone. Certainly, it's not threatening Russia. And Russia has no right to build any spheres of interest. It has no right to say to Finland what we should do as members of NATO. We will do what we will have to do as an allied country. You're building a 200 kilometer fence on the border with Russia as well. I believe that construction has started. What's the purpose of that? Well, I have to say first that, of course, I regret that we are in this situation where building fences is a necessity and a reality in today's world. I personally would prefer a world of peace and, and freedom of movement. Uh, it was Russia who started this appalling war in Ukraine. And um, this is part of the response to that. It is our border security officials, the border guards, who recommended our government to build the fence. And we do what is our duty to do. It, it is in order to increase security at the border. It is also a border of the European Union. Is, is it really about uh, stopping young Russian males of conscription age from fleeing to Finland? Is, is that what it's really about? Well, the, there hasn't been any big crowds of people trying to 
enter uh, Finland or the EU area through through us. So that's not the the point. But of course, it is a very long border. Mm. One has to keep in mind that it's 1,340 kilometers, and we have to make uh, make it sure that it is protected at all times. So it would require huge amounts of personnel. So perhaps it's it's a good idea also use uh, pens as as a means to further improve the security of the EU uh, external border. Uh, Minister, let, let's talk about some other issues now. There's been a lot of uh, focus in the EU in the last few weeks on uh, net zero plans, in other words, uh, to uh, reach uh, the goals on decarbonisation. And your country is aiming to be the first European country to reach net zero. Uh, I'm curious how you're planning to do that and whether the targets are realistic, given that there is this deforestation uh, happening in Finland. Well, it is surprisingly realistic. Our firm aim is to be climate neutral by 2035. And that's an aim, a goal that all the parties actually share. There's only one political party that disagrees with that, I regret it, but the huge majority of Finns is, is ready to, to move towards a climate neutral uh, economy and climate neutral society. And part of the reasons why we are being so successful is, is the fact that uh, we haven't started from you know zero. <laughs> uh, for a long time already, many years, we have been investing in different sources of energy. Our energy mix is quite versatile. We also have nuclear, we have a lot of biomass, and now we are building wind and solar. And that's helping us in order to, to transform our industries and our energy production into climate neutrality. And by the way, that is also a means to create a sort of strategic autonomy for Finland, for the EU. We must cut the dependencies on fossil fuels, especially deliveries from Russia and elsewhere from autocracies to to Europe and we have to invest in clean and green energy. Let's talk a bit about uh, some domestic policy as well. Uh, with the Finnish uh, parliamentary election in mind, what do you think the main issues are likely to be in coalition talks which seem pretty likely to be uh, happening next week? Well, we are sort of back to basics. What people really want to talk about and what matters is the economy. So we are discussing how to stabilize public finances, how to cope with rising prices, high inflation, uh, energy prices, and the cost of living. And of course, also Finland has been obliged to get more sovereign debt and, and how to solve the situation where the debt level is getting higher. That, that's an issue. But I, as social democrat, I'd like to remind uh, the other parties and our, our partners and allies that our you know, rate of debt is not alarming in, in comparison to the average level of debt in the EU or in the Eurozone. So we can solve this issue with a calm mind and uh, we can also take into consideration the people's needs. We have to get you know, people on board uh, at these uh, times of crisis. Um, the cost of living is a real issue and we have to compensate that for people uh, in one way or another. So austerity, that's not an answer. Um, my party is rejecting that. And that, I suppose, is the most heavily debated issue in our upcoming coalition negotiations. Uh, a question about uh, migration. The, the party of, of the Finns has pledged uh, a crackdown on that. Uh, what are your thoughts on that and on the possible impact of that on the asylum and migration pact that the uh, European Union is trying to negotiate at the moment? Well, I, I, I think the, the political uh, aims uh, to cut migration is totally unrealistic. Uh, first, we have to keep committed to our international obligations. 
we have to give asylum to people in need. That is uh, in, in international um, agreements, and we need to stick to that. Secondly, uh, population is aging, not only in Finland, but also throughout the EU. So we have to actually uh, attract our migration and immigrants to Europe and also to Finland in order to, to make sure that we have enough labor force for our growing industries and for also for our public services. So Finland needs migration and it's our firm intention to keep Finland open uh, for the world. It means that we can welcome different people here from different backgrounds, different ethnics and, and so on. There's no room for racism in Finland. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me, uh, Tuti Tupurainen, Finnish Minister for European Affairs, and join me in a few minutes for the second part of Talking Europe, where I'll be discussing uh, a topical issue with my panel of MEPs here at the European Parliament.